to the UFC 189 conference call. Today's conference is being recorded. At this time, I'd like to turn the conference over to Mr. Dave Scholler. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you, John. Hello to all of our media and hello to all of our fans listening live on UFC.com. This is the UFC 189 media conference called UFC 189 next Saturday night. Chad Mendez versus Conor McGregor for the interim featherweight title and Robbie Lawler versus Rory McDonald for the featherweight, uh, excuse me, for the welterweight title. All four participants are on the call and John, without further ado, let's go ahead and go to the first question. Thank you. If you'd like to signal to ask a question, you may do so by pressing the star key, followed by the digit 1 on your touchtone telephone. If you're joining us on a speakerphone, please make sure that your mute function is turned off to allow your signal to reach our equipment. Once again, that is star 1 if you'd like to signal, and we'll pause for a moment to assemble the queue. And we'll take our first question from Ron Crook with Inside MMA. Hey, guys, thanks for the time today. I'd like to begin with a question to Connor McGregor. Uh, Connor, you are going from preparing for Jose Aldo, a Muay Thai and stand-up fighter, to facing a very strong wrestler in Chad Mendez. Did you have to completely blow up your strategy and game plan? Give us a little insight on that. I just saw it, yeah. I'm, uh, I don't have a game plan. I just go in there formless, rootless, cold, and that's it. It does not matter who, who was in front of me or what style or what approach they have. My approach will win the fight. Connor, a quick follow up. Was there any thought of not accepting this fight with Chad Mendez or was that, uh, and if the answer is no, why not? Uh, not, not, not one. Uh, thought the the approach for me was I came in and I told them that I was going to destroy everyone in the division one by one I would get every single one of them I said that time and time again it does not it was never about the champion it was never about any of that it was about me destroying every single one of these featherweights and essentially making it a one man uh, division so it doesn't matter what way it happens whether it's Jose Bush Chad Bush they're all going to get it every single one of them are going to get it. And my final question, Connor, the USC just announced that they'll be back in Ireland October 24th. Have they spoken to you about that event possibly being a featherweight unification fight with Aldo in Dublin if you are to get by Chad Mendes next weekend? They said, um, they didn't say, I spoke with Lorenzo, yes, uh, two days ago about it. And, uh, he was trying to say, well, we want bigger stadiums because this is like on our, in, in the O2, which is like a nine and a half thousand see a stadium in Dublin so um, he wants me on a bigger one but I'm saying you don't have a show in my hometown and not have me on it so most certainly I want to be on that card so we will see what way it plays out but I definitely anytime the UFC rolls into my town I most certainly want to be on that card very good thank you final question just to Chad Mendez Chad uh, once it was official that Aldo was out how long of a training camp will you have had preparing for Conor McGregor? I've been preparing for Conor McGregor since the first time I've seen this dude fight in the UFC. This is a guy that I knew was, uh, you know, he's going to talk his way up to the top. You know, he'd be every person they put in front of him. Uh, you know, this is time for me to get in there and do, you know, what I've trained for my entire life, and that's become the champion. You know, I, I live a healthy lifestyle. I stay in great shape year-round. Um, I never let my weight get too far out of control. And, uh, you know, for me, taking anything on, you know, three weeks, this is this is perfect for me, especially fighting a guy like Connor. You know, this is a guy that you know, I know I can beat, and I'm going to get in there and I'm going to do that. Thanks for the time, guys. We'll see you in Vegas. And we'll take our next question from Matt Jewell with Boston.com. Hi, uh, my question is for Connor and Chad. Uh, Connor, uh, as seen in Boston, the Irish fans come out and throw, you know, wherever you fight. Um, and there's certainly going to be a lot of them out there for you on, in, in Vegas on uh, fight night. Um, do you find it an advantage having sort of like, uh, you know, your countrymen rooting for you when you're on foreign soil? And uh, for Chad, do you think the Americans will show up, uh, you know, or be as vocal on fight night for you uh, when you guys uh, throw down? It's definitely, yeah. uh, it's definitely an advantage. You know, I don't think people can understand what it's like until you're inside that octagon and the screaming fans are there. They're in your face 
all week there in your face. It's it's essentially like entering a bear pit. So I don't think people understand that until until it's too late and they are bang in the middle of it and I'm pressing forward and I'm banging shot after shot until until eventually they crumble. So it's most certainly an advantage for me. And I think this is a great advantage. And I do believe that the Americans, uh, I believe a lot of these Brazilians, you know, are going to be backing me up as well. Um, you know, I have a lot of fans, a lot of family, a lot of friends, you know, people that are rooting for me, and a lot of people want to see me destroy Connor. Awesome. Thanks, guys. And once again, as a reminder, it is star one. If you'd like to signal to ask a question, we'll take our next question from Damon Martin with Fox Sports. Uh, yeah, first question is for Connor. Uh, you know, Connor, yesterday we saw the news with uh, Jose Aldo, you know, come out kind of suddenly. But in your own head, had you already thought that, that Aldo was going to drop out of the fight? Is that something you had contemplated since you heard about the rib injury? Um, I've been contemplating it since long before the rib injury. Long before. As soon as the fight was announced, I've been contemplating it. I knew, like I said before, the eyes never lie. And any time I looked into that man's eyes, I saw fear. I saw glass. So I anticipated he would not show up. And when he got his opportunity to pull, he pulled. So it's something I expected. But I, Is there... really, I don't, I don't blame the man. I was going to fucking butcher him rip him limb from limb. So I probably wouldn't want to face that either. So it is what it is. With, with, with that said, you know, you uh, you mentioned earlier that, you know, it was never about Aldo. It was about, you know, the title and about obviously, you know, beating every featherweight out there. But is there some part of you that feels like there is a score to be settled with Aldo when he comes back? 100% if he, if he mans up. We should we should most certainly get it on, but I don't know whether he will be back. Like I said, he's gone running, and I don't think he'll be back. So you think that's it? Do you do you feel like this fight then is for the real featherweight title? If a man pussies out, and he has pussied out time and time again, he's pulled out of contest time and time again. I mean, the medical reports state that he is fit to fight. So there's no more question. You're fit to fight. And you're not gonna fight. The belts rightfully should be stripped, and this is for the real featherweight belt. Awesome. Thank you, Connor. Now we'll take our next question from Hayden O'Donoghue with Irish Sun newspaper. Uh, hi there. I have a question for Connor. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> sorry, Connor. <clears throat> you've had a longer training camp than Chad has. But from his point of view, um, this came along, was unexpected, and he's happy to have this fight. So do you think your longer training camp is going to benefit you, or maybe he's going to have a shot on the arm from getting this opportunity? Um, no, I, I have been in fight camp since I'm eight years of age. I am prepared for this. I have been preparing for this moment for a long, long time. and I don't really pay attention to how long he has or how long he hasn't had. Um, I just look at his past performance, and I feel he is. I feel he is he he is a he's in the wrong way division. I see him gasping for breath and I see me butchering his facial structure after that until I, I take the victory. Okay, thanks Connor. And uh one question for Chad. Chad, uh, you previously described yourself as the Mike Titan of the division with a mean brass double leg. How do you think your striking is gonna compare with Connor's? I think my striking is gonna be great. Connor's never faced anyone like me before. I have the athleticism, the strength, the power, the speed, and I have wrestling to put him on his back and finish this fight. This is a fight that this fight is mine. Okay, thanks, guys. And we'll take our next question from Jose Olivar with Sacramento B. Thank you. Uh, this question is for uh, Chad. Hey, uh, Chad, uh, I know you um, found out about this fight you know, fairly recently here, but um, did you talk about um, – so is uh, Dwayne Ludwig going to be in your corner for this fight, or have you been working with him at all to prepare you for this fight? I know it's last minute, but have you gotten a chance to work with him, or are you going to work with him at all? No, Dwayne left us. Dwayne lives in Colorado now. Dwayne, uh, he, he doesn't work at Team Alpha now anymore. I've been working with uh, new head coach, Martin Campman, and uh, you know, I have a great stand-up coach, Joey. You know, we have all these great guys here at Team Alpha now that I train with every single day, so 
I have plenty of uh, knowledge and and uh, plenty of years uh, in the sport, so I'm feeling good. Gotcha. And um, so could you just kind of talk about as far as, um, you know, uh, that you, when you found out about this fight, I know you talked about how you kind of felt for Frank Edgar, you know, not being chosen or not being tapped to um, replace Aldo. Um, could you just talk about that? Do you feel at all that um, – that uh, when you found out that Aldo was injured, did you um, know that you were going to get a call right away, or, or were, was there any doubts in your mind that you were going to get a phone call? Or? No, within within the news breaking, within 24 hours, I was in Vegas talking to Dana. So, uh, you know, right away, you know, I knew it was me and Frankie. They're right there at the top. Um, I thought there might be a possibility, but you know, this this shot is mine. You know, I talked to Dana, and uh, we made it happen. You know told him, give me that contract, let's sign this baby right now, and, uh, you know, we did, so, uh, you know, you know, Frankie, he's a tough guy, he's up there, he's, he's beat some great guys his last few fights, he's um, right there in the mix, but, you know, I just knocked out a guy that took all those five rounds in the first round, so, uh, I feel like I deserve it, you know, I, I had side of the year with him last year, I think a couple of small things changed, uh, or, you know, we even have that fight in the States, and, you know, I possibly win that fight, so. Uh, you know, I'm right there. Gotcha. Uh, and uh, last question for you: um, If you do win this fight, um, what's the plan? Do you um, do you want to defend your title um, if Aldo doesn't um, get back in time, or do you plan on just waiting for him and and, and kind of unifying the title? I'm down to do whatever, man. I'm focused on winning this fight. Once I get that belt, whatever the hell the UFC wants me to do, I'm in there to fight. I'm in to beat the best. I think a fight with Frankie would be pretty damn fun for the fans to watch. Um, you know, and I'd always like, you know, Frankie's a guy that I've looked up to and watched fight for a long time. I love his style. Uh, you know, I love his pace, his tenacity. And that's a guy that I would love to get in there and fight. So, uh, it's ultimately up to the UFC, though. All right. Thanks, Chad. Uh, and we'll take our next question from Brett Okamoto with ESPN. Thanks for the time, guys. Uh, a couple questions for you, Chad. Obviously, this was a big opportunity. It wasn't one that you were going to turn down. What is the biggest challenge, though, about uh, going into a five-round, you know, big title fight in Las Vegas, headlining a card on just two weeks' notice? Is it trying to get timing? Is it trying to get your cardio up? Is it cutting the weight? I mean, what would you say is the single most difficult part about it? I mean, I wouldn't pick out one single difficult thing. I mean, everything, you know, pretty much right on track where it would be if I just went through a full training camp. You know, I don't, I don't stop training. I don't just go through a camp site and then, you know, completely leave the gym and never see it again until I'm ready to start camp again. You know, this is a, a training year round. This is our job. This is what we're, you know, made to do. This is what we're doing for our lives, our livelihood. Uh, and I love doing it. So, you know, I felt ready. I, I've been training. I've been hitting it hard. You know, I got the call. We're three weeks out. You know, at that point, it's just fine tuning, getting that weight down. And I, I said before, I don't get too far away from my weight. Uh, my fight weight, you know, 15, 20 pounds at max, you know. And, uh, you know, it, it, for me, it, when you get a call like that, you jump all over it, uh, you know, and I'll be ready. And I've seen this in previous interviews you've done that you're not going to go into this fight emotional, but you have said that some of the things he's, he has said has made it personal for you. And I wonder if you could expand on that. I mean, we know he's called you short, but you don't seem like the kind of guy who would really take that to heart. What is What has he said exactly that, that has rubbed you the wrong way? I mean, yeah, the short shit, I mean, I don't really give a shit about that kind of stuff. I've been short my whole life. But, uh, you know, for me, it was, we had to do an interview right before uh, my Aldo fight, and he's talking about putting balls on, on my head and, you know, just being very unprofessional. And, uh, you know, this is something that, you know, I made it personal. And uh, for me, you, know, you don't fucking do that. You know, this is a, a fight game. This is something where somebody could seriously get injured, and that's what I'm looking to do when I get in there against Conor McGregor. And my last question, I, I, you were probably assuming that he was going to make some kind of prediction on the fight. That's what he's been doing, you know, really throughout his, his UFC career. He said that you're going to finish, he's going to finish you in four minutes. And I guess I would just ask you, what do you think is going to be happening in the fight four minutes in? Yeah, Connor, I'm going to give you a little more respect, buddy. I'm going to finish you within the first three. Thanks, Chad. Then we'll take our next question from Dave Deeper with Post Media News. Hi, uh, thanks you guys for the time. Uh, for Robbie and Rory, um, 
same same question for both of you. Um, how much do you guys go and look back at the, at the first fight? Do you take away from that, or is it so long ago, a couple of years, uh, um, that it just doesn't uh, necessarily amount to too much? Uh, for me, I uh, I don't really look at it at all. Uh, I've come a long way since that fight. I've uh, just practicing new techniques and become a whole new fighter since then. And uh, I'm focused on bringing uh, a new attitude and uh, and uh, you know uh, get a better version of myself into the, into this fight. Robbie, yeah, I don't uh, yeah, I don't spend too much time. Uh, watching tape and, and doing those kind of things. I watch a little bit of tape. My coaches do all the breaking down of my opponents, and I just go out there and train every day and try to become a better fighter every day. So I'm just pushing myself, not too worried about who I'm fighting as much as I'm worried about how I can grow and how I can go out there and dominate uh, who I'm going out there and facing. So um, last fight didn't really matter. July 11th is the only date that matters. <laughs> Uh, thanks, you guys. Uh, then quick one for Connor. Um, you uh, you talk a lot about the business aspect of uh, of the fight game. Uh, naturally, you might think that a fight that's had you know this many months of build up won't do the same numbers on pay per view as as a fight with two weeks. Uh, is is that something uh, that you pay attention to at all? Um, you know, seeing as uh, assuming pay-per-view cut bonuses, extra cash that comes with extra sales, is that something that you think about at all with the opponent change? Of course, it's something I think about. Um, it's what it's all about. This is prize fighting. It's about the money show. But I feel, I feel this is the the McGregor show. People are showing up to see me. It doesn't matter whether it's Jose or Chad. I mean. It would have been nice if Jose didn't pussy out, but we'll take the substitute. You know, we'll, we'll take we'll take the B level guy, and we'll still we'll still break records with this. Now, people right. are going to want to tune into this fight because they're going to want to watch me destroy Connor. Chad, you so have there's going to be there's so going to be there's going to be uh, so a lot of people tuning in. I know it. Uh, well, they ain't tuning in for you, Chad. Let's yeah. let's call a spade a spade here. They, no, they, they want to see me sure. crush your face. Come People on, hate listening to you talk. They hate your mouth. I'm going to fucking butcher you. You should have no. stayed home, kid. No, I'm gonna you shouldn't have answered that phone. <laughs> yeah. You shouldn't have answered that phone. Okay, keep talking, buddy. Keep talking. All right, thank you guys very much. We'll see you in Vegas. And we'll take our next question from Jack. And can I see now? With the uh, Boston Herald. Oh, no. um, can you tell us if you have any thoughts on what UFC can do to cut down on fight cancellations due to injury like this? Um, I don't really know. I don't really care about stuff like that. I just know I show up. I know I'm, I train smart, so I don't really care about how what are people do that shit. You know what I mean, just train smart, be intelligent. There's a lot on the line. Don't be bringing in random schmucks to imitate and people that don't you don't know. You know what I mean? You need the, you need your circle of people that you came up with. That's that's who that's who got you to this level that you're at now. It's the people that you train with day in day out. It's not all of a sudden you've got a new opponent, so you need to bring in this guy or that guy. It's 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 the wrong approach. Even 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 the way the way uh, Chad and his little team over there doing it, they're chopping and changing coaches and. It's just a sign. It's just a. It's the wrong environment, and that's why, time after time, they come up in second place. You talked about how you suspected through the world tour that Jose um, Aldo. I think your words were was looking for a way out. Can you be specific on what signs you picked up on that told you that? I just I said it already. It's you, when you look into a man's eyes and you look him dead in the eye, you can see straight into his soul. Eh? And no one else even watching can see it. It's only between you and him. And I looked into his eyes, and I knew this motherfucker doesn't want to be here. He doesn't want it the way I want it. So that was that.
And did you draw anything from the incident during camp where Aldo provided a, a drug sample and then ultimately it was discarded? I know you called him a little weasel for that, and then he gave his it was a little, It was a little weasel mill, you know what I mean? I showed up at the MGM, and they fucking they dragged me, and I got tested. I don't blow it. I don't urine. No problem. Didn't make a fuss about it. Got it done. Happy. Happy that the spot's getting cleaned up. First question I asked was, when are they going to Brazil? He said, we're going to Brazil next week. He pointed to the guy that was going to Brazil. This guy is going to Brazil. I said, okay, that's good. So I carried on with my day. And then I hear that that man went out to Brazil and ends up getting thrown in jail and fucking fines and all all this crazy shit. It's it, 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 it was a weasel uh, milk, so yeah, I called it as I saw it, you know. Who, who, who knows whether that, that is the reason? Maybe, maybe he came off something. Maybe the body starts getting weaker. You know, you come off that shit, the body, the body gets weaker. I don't know, but um, who, who cares? He, he, he's gone running. You, can, you won't see him again. You know what I mean? He was beaten mentally before he was beaten physically. So it doesn't matter if he was on something or whatever. All that stuff. It means nothing now. He's gone. Connor, do you think Chad is a tougher fight than Jose? I think Chad is the substitute, the B level. I think he's a wrestler with an overhand that gases. You know what I mean? I think his body, his body weight to his side, to his height, and you know his body is in disproportion. And I think that hampers him as a fighter. I think that's why he gases and he gets that, he gets that tiredness. And that's why when I'm pressing him, I'm pressing him, and we have these exchanges and these scrambles and. His belly is going to be breathing in and his body is going to be screaming for oxygen and I'm going to be still there in his face, cracking him with everything I have. Every shot, the heel, the knee, the elbow, the fist, every shot in the book I have. And uh, and, and that will be that. Eventually, he will give like like they all do. Thanks. I don't know how you're going to be pressuring anything from your back. Dude. So it's, listen, what 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 you going to do? You can't, e- you can't even pass guard. You're a white belt on the mat. Well, you get me down, you hold me down. I'll butcher you from the bottom. I'll get back up and <laughs> butcher you on the feet. All right, what's what you get to? What are you going to do? Are you going to do the splits on me? Oh, Fucking, what do you think, you're John Van Damme, dude? I'm going to keep you in the throat. <laughs> All right, dude, you're so tough. So tough. We'll see. Thanks, guys. And as a reminder, it is star one if you'd like to signal. We'll take our next question from Peter Theodosu with News.com. Hi guys, just a question for Connor. Now you mentioned before that uh, you're interested in a stadium show, and with the Irish uh, arena being too small, um, how UFC one? I, well, I, I didn't say I didn't say the Irish arena was too small. That that old uh, that old two the Point Debo in in Ireland is a phenomenal arena. The, the atmosphere and the sound. It's nine and a half thousand, but we make ourselves heard. Nine and a half thousand Irish screaming Irish sound like. 195,000, you know, it's, it's, I never said it was too small. It was a Lorenzo who said it was too small for me. We want to do a stadium show. Well, yes, I do want to do a stadium show, but if you're coming back to my home city, I want to be on that card. I built, I built this here. You know what I mean? I, I'm the one that put the UFC on the map here. So if you're, if you're coming into my hometown, you best believe I want on the show. Okay. UFC 193 in November will be in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, with it sitting four months away in, in a popular market for fighters from the UK and Ireland, there's a possibility of fighting at an Australian uh, stadium show appeal to you. Yeah, you know, it, it it does not appeal to me really, you know, because it has no significance to me. It's the Dublin stadium I want. This is the dream. This is what I create. There's no one, there's not... There's probably nobody on the roster that could fill a stadium right now and except me. So for you to take that uh, and and try and put me in another country to fill the stadium, it doesn't really interest me. When, when the stadium happens, it's in Crow Park. It's in Dublin, Ireland. It's it's in my home city. It's, it's what I have built. It's what I have earned. So that's what I will get. Thanks, Hannah. Just one for Chad. Uh, you fought Jose in Brazil, and now you're going to fight... Uh... Uh, Connor in uh, probably an Irish uh, an Irish hotbed in uh, Las Vegas. How do you feel being the uh, the antagonist once again? Uh, it doesn't bother me at all, man. This is uh, I got a ton of people there coming to this fight, so uh, you know I'm gonna 
I'm going to focus on what I got to do. I'm going to get in there. It's not like any other fight. You know, I've done it. I've stepped in uh, Brazil and fought Aldo twice there. You know, you shut that out. Uh, you have the task at hand. You get in there and get it done. Okay. Thanks, guys. And we'll take our next question from Guest Ryan with Independence IE. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Thanks for your time. Uh, first question, just to Connor. Um, a lot of the uh, media outlets reporting that you were the favorite against Aldo uh, and you're an underdog against Mendez, and that's probably uh, down to the wrestling of Chad Mendez. Uh, a lot of the social media posts, not a lot, but some of the social media posts uh, that have come out from your camp recently have showed you working on your wrestling. Um, what, what have... How good is your wrestling compared to uh, some of the U.S. fighters who have you do it, do it in college and, and, and in high school? I, I am very confident that if we exchange in any grappling sequence, I have the I have the ability to dominate him. I have my wrestling coach out here, Sergey, who is a Moldovan, multiple time Moldovan champion. He has been with me my whole career since I'm 15 years of age. I have been training with with Sergey, um, so he has been with me this whole camp, not just. Not just because the the opponent change has been Chad. He has been out here since we have arrived in Las Vegas. So my whole team is out here. My team since day one. My team that have been with me from the beginning are all out here. My wrestling coaches, my stand-up coaches, my sparring partners, my jiu-jitsu coaches. My whole team. And are you... Do you get a little bit tired of hearing that there is no wrestling or no decent wrestling in Europe and that, you know, as soon as Connor fights a wrestler, he's going to get his toughest test yet? Uh, no, this is part of the business. People, if, quest, if people want questions answered, that's what, that's what makes money, you know, people are interested to see. So I am happy that people have questions. If they didn't have these questions, well then, you know, it wouldn't generate as much interest. So it's part of the game and I'm, I'm okay with it. And then just a quick one uh, for Rory McDonald. Uh, Rory, you're a quiet enough guy and you usually don't get involved in uh, hyping fights. Um, have you been impressed the way Connor has taken to the, the hype machine and uh, really brought attention to UFC 189? Yeah, of course. Uh, I mean, Connor is good for the sport. He's, uh, he's making us all more money. You know, not just himself, but, you know, there's more attention on, on the sport, on this pay-per-view. And, uh, you know, it's good for everyone, in my opinion. And then lastly, uh, Robbie Lawler, um, you've, it's been said about you that in your training you don't do uh, heavy sparring rounds. Um, is that the main reason that you've kind of had your second coming in your career? And um, would, can you um, do you think that's what's wrong with Jose Aldo and his camp and you know that's the problem of why he seems to get injured and all of that? No, I I spar a lot now. Ever since I moved down to American Top Team, I've been sparring. So I've been sparring for the last two and a half years. That's why I've been able to make my run. I'm healthy. I just think it comes down to people not knowing their bodies, not listening, and having training partners who are. Uh, beating them up a little bit more than they should. You should have guys you trust, guys you move around, and uh, guys who push you every day. And it's uh, you have to be smart out there so you can come in uh, healthy. And I think people need to listen to their bodies. Uh, some guys might be working too hard, pushing it too hard, and uh, that's how you get broken down and beat down. Great. Thanks a million, gentlemen. Thanks for your time. And we'll take our next question from Stephen Morocco. With USA Today. Hey, Connor. Um, I was wondering if you'd heard any hard numbers um, on the number of uh, tickets sold to Irish fans and maybe whether or not there's been any refund requests since the change in card. Um, no, it's uh, I, the number, I believe, was 24 to 2,500 from Ireland in particular, but that doesn't factor in the Irish that are living in America and the Irish that are coming in from all other uh, areas of the globe. But I believe 2,500 specifically from the island of Ireland uh, purchased tickets and 
like I said, it's the McGregor show. As long as I'm on the show, they will show up. And um, I look forward to putting on this show for my country, man. Stephen, this is Dave Schaller. I'm going to chime in there uh, to support Connor in that statement. More than 20% of ticket sales have come uh, from your representative out of uh, Ireland in particular. And at this present moment, there have been no substantial refunds to report. Okay, thank you for that. And then, Connor, a, a, a quick follow-up. Uh, there's been a rumor going around on Twitter that you are undergoing PRP therapy for your knee. Is that accurate? What, what is PRP? I believe it's stem cell therapy, or it could be platelet-rich plasma. Uh, there's, a, there's a variety of different uh, uh, treatments that go to, uh, to rejuvenating the no. knee. No. My buddy is good. My buddy is good. Okay. All right, thank you very much. We'll take our next question from Kel Dansby with Black Sports Online. This question for Connor and Chad. Assuming, you know, Aldo comes back sometime this fall and one of you guys will have to fight him to unify the title, would you be willing to take that fight in Brazil? It seems he's backed out of his last couple of U.S. appearances. Are you willing to then go down there and kind of you know, take the belt to his home turf and defend it down there, or would you request that he fight in the U.S. or somewhere else like Ireland? Uh, Connor, you can't refer. Sorry, what, were you talking to me there? What was the question? Yeah, uh, would you be willing to fight Aldo? If you win the title, would you be willing to go to Brazil to fight Aldo, or would you like to make him fight somewhere else if you back out of the it's, it's, it's the McGregor division now. He put, he bottled it. He went running. It's on my call now. So if he wants to come back with his tail between his legs, that's no problem. He can come back. We can do the stadium in Dublin. But it's on my call now. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I agree, man. I fought, I fought that guy twice in Brazil now. I'll get that belt. I'm fighting that dude in the States this time. And last question for Robbie. You're the champion coming in here. Uh, you'll be the only undisputed champion come USC 189, but you're flying under the radar. Does that give you, like, an advantage? you like kind of going under the radar and having the calm instead of uh, headlining the event? Uh, it doesn't matter. It is what it is. I just uh, stick to what I do. It's just training hard and, and concentrating on myself, what the uh, UFC do to promote. And Connor is doing a great job of promoting the fight. Mendez is coming in to uh, fill in, and I think it's going to be a good fight. But uh, I don't, I'm not too worried about that stuff. I concentrate on myself. I concentrate on getting my body stronger. I concentrate on getting my mind stronger so that I can go in there and put a show on July 11th and beat somebody up. All right, thank you, guys. And we'll take our next question from Ariel Helwani with MMAfighting.com. Hey, guys, thanks for the time. Um, first, just wanted to ask Chad a quick question. I know prior to the second Aldo fight, it got a lot of heated between you two. But would you say that you've never felt this way about an opponent, that it's never been this personal for you before a fight? <laughs> you would go there, huh, Ariel? You love staring up shit, bro. <laughs> uh, no, man, this is, yeah, this is a fight that I'm fucking super pumped to get in there and do, man. Like I said, two weeks notice or a day notice or I have a full fucking camp. I'm not turning this fight down. Okay, and uh, for Connor, I know that uh, you've never actually faced off with Chad. You've never actually looked in his eyes. But when you hear that, he says that, you know, he, he was uh, – annoyed and disrespected by your comments on that uh, that BT Sports show, which was, you know, almost a year ago. Do you, do you think that you're in his head? Do you think that this is a man that's, you know, treating this fight too personally, that's too emotional about it? Um, I don't really I don't really care about that, you know. We're too close to the fight. None of this, it doesn't really matter, but I can hear a quiver in his, in his voice there. I feel, I feel when it comes down to it and the shots are exchanged, he he. I see him more as an athlete than a fighter. So I feel he will break in there. It doesn't matter whether the build-up has happened or not. He will get in there and he will break. Nope. Thank you. And we'll take our next question from Isaac Malrosi with the Roar. 
Hi, I've got a question for Robbie Lawler. Um, the first time you fought McGregor, it was a split decision win. I know you said it doesn't matter, but how important is it to you get a Uh Can you repeat the question, please? Okay, last time you fought Rory, it was a split decision win. I know you said that fights in the past, but is it important for you to get a more decisive victory again this time? Yeah, I think uh, that's that's always the plan. It's one it's one thing I want to do. I want to go out there and finish people. I don't want to go out there and leave it up to the judges. I want to get in their space, either get a submission or knock somebody out. That's how I fight. I don't want to leave it up to the judges. So yeah, I want to put a stamp on this fight. Awesome, man. And a quick question for Warrior, if you could, you know, kind of answer that. You lost the first fight. It's important for you to come in and kind of prove that you're a different fighter now than you were then. <clears throat> Uh, I'm not really trying to prove anything. Uh, I'm just, uh, I, I believe I have a new attitude. Um, I've come a long way and, uh, you know, I feel at my best right now and I'm just going to go in there and, and show that to the world, you know. I'm just going to perform and uh, the rest will take care of itself. And a quick one for Connor. But, uh, Chad predicted that he would finish you in three. I know you love your predictions. Do you have a prediction for this fight? Uh, if you have been listening, to, I said four minutes into the first round, he will be unconscious. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. We'll take our next question from Lee and Ducey with Fairfax Media. Uh, question for Connor. Connor, Chad has, I guess, questioned your mental fortitude. Uh, you said that you have quitting you referencing your last Submission loss in 2010. I mean, do you rate those sort of comments considering that you've come a long way in the last five years? Um, no, I do not. I do not rate them. I know my growth. I know my work ethic, and I know where I have come in this game. And now I am in a position where I am invincible. Thanks. Very well. So, just with regards, I mean, you're fighting for the interim belt. In a way, this might give more ammo to the people, I guess, that don't like you out there. They will say that, okay, fine, you're the interim champ, but you've just beaten a guy with no distress. They'll, yeah. they'll always the say fight. something. Let me tell you, because you sound like one of them people. They'll always say something to try and discredit what I'm doing here. There's always going to be a question. The, the, the rest, you know, every, every fight there's a question. You know, now now it's the wrestler question, you know, but no matter what happens, and now now you're talking, there's going to be the interim question. Then when I smoke chat, he's only had two weeks, and there'll always be something to try and discredit me, but at the end of the day, cash beats credit every day of the week, and that's what I'm here for. I'm here to shut this man down, break that pay-per-view record, and cash them big, fat checks, and fuck everybody that's doubting me. Question for uh, Robbie. Robbie, it's your first title defense. Um, how do you feel about? I mean, you, you're flying under the radar, but in terms of the promotion, it's almost like the first defense of your career is, is more of an afterthought. How do you feel about that? Does not bother me at all. I don't care if I'm the first fight, the last fight. I'm going to go out there and showcase my skills. I concentrate on myself. I let the UFC do all the promoting. I let all the media ask the questions they want to ask, and guess what I get to do? I get to go out there and showcase my skills. So that's what I concentrate on. Other than that, it just makes life easier when I concentrate on myself and, and what I can control. And what I can control is how hard I'm working and staying healthy so I can get to that part if I love it. And we'll take our next question from... Dwayne, Dwayne Finley with UFC.com. Hi, guys. These questions are for Robbie and Rory. Start with uh, Robbie. Um, you went from, uh, you know, one of the roughest patches of your career to, you know, writing one of the most impressive chapters that I think arguably probably in the current era of MMA with the comeback that you've had. Uh, you're on the verge of you know, defending your welterweight title, man. What, what's this journey been, met, uh, been, been like for you and what's it meant? I mean, it's just a lot of hard work uh, finally paying off. It's a lot of uh, never say die, always believe in myself. And, and this was hard work by my training partners and my coaches throughout the years. And um, 
but I'm not really concentrating on that kind of stuff right now. I'm concentrating on today, how I can get better today, so I can continue to uh, write my story and uh, and beat people up and and don't let this uh, this ride in. Now, and, and you know, has you know those say anybody who wrote you off during that stretch, and you know, in your comeback, is there's been a lot of attention on you. Has that been any motivation for you, Robbie, uh, to kind of prove people that you still had this in you to do this? No, I'm self motivated. I don't need people to. I don't need people to uh, doubt me for me to wake up and work hard every day and and try to prove myself. That's that's the inner strength that I have. I want to go out there and showcase what I'm capable of to all the people who believed in me. All the all my training partners who helped me out along the way. That's who I'm doing this for. I don't need any extra motivation from the naysayers. And thanks, thanks, Robbie. Uh, Rory, this yeah, is you. you. Um, You've been, you know, you've been fighting grown men since you were a teenager. You've been competing against the best in the world for, you know, the last half of the decade. So, you know, now you're on the verge of, you know, potentially becoming world champion. What's what's this journey been like for you? Oh, it's uh, it's, it's awesome. I, I love what I do. I love my life, and I'm just gonna continue to uh, do what I like in my life. And you know, it's been an incredible journey through martial arts for me. Uh, through my, you know, years as a teenager and, and growing up into a, a man with it, so it's been uh, it's been incredible. Um, and uh, I'm just uh, I'm just focused now on on uh, you know having the best performance in my life and leaving it all there July 11th. And you know, throughout your uh, progression in the UFC. You know, you were labeled as kind of the heir apparent to, the, to this uh, 170 crown a long time ago, but yet you showed a, a lot of patience as you made your progression. You know, what's that what's that process been like with you as kind of measuring your growth and patience and knowing when you're ready to, to make the step you're about to make? Well, I knew that, uh, you know, it's when I got into the UFC, I knew I wasn't ready for to fight for the belt, you know, when I first got in. You know, I, I still had a lot of growth, you know, uh, to do, um, I, I needed a lot of experience um, with top level guys, and you know, you know, it took time, but you know, uh, step by step, I gained that experience. Uh, kept practicing techniques, developing uh, new styles, and you know, keeping an open mind as a martial artist. And you know, uh, I'm here. You know, so uh, you know, and the road doesn't end here after this. You know, it's. Uh, the life of a martial artist is it's it keeps going, you know. After my career is over, and you know, I'm still going to be training martial arts and and growing in, in in this, you know. So, excellent. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Joan. Then we'll take our next question from James and Kabia with Zoo Magazine. Um, thank you for your time, guys. Just a couple questions for Connor. Connor, um, you've already talked about it being an interim title, but would you say People's Champion is the one title you're undisputed holder of at the moment? Um, I don't really care about that either. It's the approval or disapproval of, of, of people is not something I, I I pay attention to. It's not what I do this for. Um, as far as I'm concerned, this is the real world title that's on the line. If if the if Jose is afraid and won't show up, well then he's done. It's it's done with that now. Now now this is for the real uh, featherweight belt. So I don't label this an interim belt one bit. This is the real UFC featherweight world title. Um, okay. Um, I've talked to the guy who's recently come out and said you're one of the greatest. You're probably one of the greatest athletes around. Um, when the Terminator co-signs you, do you care about that? He's half robot. Do, does that officially make you the baddest man walking around on the planet? Um, you know, Arnold's an absolute uh, legend of a man. I mean, his story he came over to the United States of America absolutely butt naked. He couldn't even speak a lick of English. He became a Hollywood megastar. He became governor of California, and if I mean, if he if he could speak, or if he was full breed American, he'd probably be president right now. So that man's an absolute legend, and he knows what he's talking about when he's talking about me. So it's an honor to hear them words from from my friend Arnold. 
Thank you. Um, just a question for you, Chad. Um, how important is it for you to be um, the first man to shut Conor McGregor's mouth in the UFC? This is huge, man. This is, like I said, this is a fight I don't turn down. Uh, you know, I got the offer, and I said, give me that contract right away. So, uh, you know, this is a huge, huge opportunity. I'm not turning it. And at this time, I'd like to turn the conference back over to.